Klaus Schwab, the WEF, the WHO, all unelected globalist bodies to which some extent you pay for through your hard earned money. But the good news is the only thing they care about is your health, helping you to get through pandemics, to get through various crises. This isn't about surveillance and at least there's no terrible dark plan to observe even your innermost thoughts. Oh. <laughs> Klaus Schwab at the WF openly discussed new technologies along with an agenda to observe and track human thoughts. You're not going to believe this. I don't believe this. But sadly, it's true. Let's get into it. Can you imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains and um, I can immediately feel because you all will have implants. I can and we measure your, your brain waves. Klaus Schwab, the old Santa Claus Nostradamus, is always predicting somehow things that will happen in the future. Well, this is no different. The annual World Economic Forum gathering has always been a testing ground for some ideas that normalise all kinds of mass surveillance and sometimes extremely privacy invasive technologies. I don't like to pry. And monitoring people's brain activity, including via implants, was one of the technologies presented at an event in Davos this year by Duke's University professor Nita Fahani. Brain implants are not new in and of themselves and are used in medicine to treat some serious conditions. However, the kind brought up here at one point are the ones to be put into healthy people. Oh. Decoding complex thoughts is already possible, Fahani said during her Ready for Brain Transparency talk at the WEF Summit last month. I don't think I am ready. You thought you were ready. Oh. And the tech is now also able to reveal the degree of stress somebody is experiencing, as well as what they are paying attention to. Stop looking over here, Davos. Look over there at those insects and maybe eat some. <laughs> So the goal is to know what or how a person is feeling and what they're thinking and what draws their interest. That couldn't be a problem if it fell into the wrong hands. Why don't we look at whose hands is going to be falling into? Klaus's hands. Let me put down my pussy blanco and pick up your brains. First off, a video. Uh, it's going to make you see the future and understand a wonderful future where we can use brainwaves to fight crime. Yeah, you gotta fight crime. If someone's thinking about crime, surely there's nothing wrong with stopping them, you know, because no one ever thinks about doing something and then doesn't do it. So just arrest them. That's not already the plot of a major Hollywood blockbuster. Fight crime, be more productive, and find love. <laughs> also, find love in prison. Even you can't believe how productive you've been. Your memo is finished, your inbox is under control, and you're feeling sharper than you have in a decade. It's a horrible, disgusting little life. That's Neo's life before he gets out of the Matrix that they're selling as the life you should aspire to. Sensing your joy, your playlist shifts to your favourite song. Sending chills up your spine as the music begins to play. Yes, it will send chills up my spine if my computer starts intuiting what mood I'm in when I'm in my horrible little drone cell as a slave to the state where even my thoughts are being observed by an apparently benevolent brain DJ. Oh, they wouldn't misuse that technology, would they? They won't become, sorry, you fought a naughty. You're going to have to go to prison. You mentally move the cursor to the left and scroll through your brain data over the past few hours. You can see your stress levels rising. As you realize that the state are observing your every thought. And imagine, for example, you thought something like, I don't know, I don't want my thoughts looked at. Who's this coming through the door? Oh, you notice your stress level is rising as it's RoboCop. What's this? RoboCop's putting you in cuffs and kicking you in your reproductive organs repeatedly. As the deadline to finish your memo approached, causing a peak in your beta brainwave activity. Science is obviously radical and wonderful, but science as a subset of late corporatism, capitalism and globalism is a terrifying proposition because once that's alloyed to the surveillance and ability to regulate and control, which we witnessed to a degree in the pandemic, that's not going to be good for you. You're not going to be leaning back, relaxing, querying what your brainwaves meant. You're going to be in prison. But what's that unusual change in your brain activity when you're asleep? It started earlier in the month. What's this that happened to me last night? Oh yeah, I was looking at the day's earlier brain waves. I've been trapped in a loop, a stenographic loop of looking at data, never experiencing joy. That must have been where I thought about making love. That was a bit where I thought about flying a kite, being outside, being connected to reality, the limitless consciousness that connects all of this, and that artificial intelligence can never replicate because it's beginning are beyond human contemplation and you have to turn inward and recognize
recognize the divine life. Robocop, you are under arrest. That is too much spiritual contemplation. You send a text message to your doctor with a mental swipe of your cursor. Could you take a quick look at my brain data? Anything to worry about? Yeah, you've given up your freedom. Your mind starts to wander to the new colleague on your team, whom you know you shouldn't be daydreaming about, given the policy against intra-office romance. Oh, that's interesting. They can use it to underwrite policies and potentially control you. You shouldn't be dreaming about an inter-office romance. That's why we've attached these nodes to your reproductive organs. But you can't help fantasizing just a little. I think I'm in love with Paul. No, you fucking were well, not. Sorry, no, I meant, uh, let me get back to work. That's more fucking like it. But then you start to worry that your boss will notice your amorous feelings when she checks your brain activity and shift your attention back to the present. One of the things that fascinates me about the old globalist dystopia is why they keep making videos about it and telling us that they're doing it. You breathe a sigh of relief when the email she sends you later that day congratulates you on your brain metrics from the past quarter. Well done. You have become a docile and obedient servant of the system. You never think a rebellious thought. You never do anything you're not supposed to do. You are essentially an AI robot yourself now. Which have earned you another performance bonus. And all I had to give up was my freedom. You head home, jamming to the music, with your work-issued brain-sensing earbuds still in. We are going to tyrannize you into total banality, and you are going to like it. The newest way to monitor attention is through a device like this one. These are ear pods that are launching later this year. These ear pods, much like the video you watched earlier, are ear pods that can pick up brainwave activity and tell whether or not a person is paying attention or their mind is wandering. The last bastion of potential freedom, your own mind, your own thoughts, the subjective experience of being you that no one, not your own mother or lover or child, will ever truly understand. One of the most painful yet beautiful things about being human, this intimate relationship with the source of all things. Available now, $50 from Amazon. Your attention itself being turned into a resource, a measurable, a metric, something that can be bought, sold, contained, evaluated. This is it. We are seeing now the pathway to dystopia being laid out before us. When you look at what's happened geopolitically in regards to the conflict that people of Ukraine and Russia have been going through, when you look at the pandemic that all of us were affected by it to a greater or lesser degree and that certainly some institutions benefited from, we can see now how the technology, the master plan, if you will, can be implemented. Attention itself, the one thing that is truly yours, can now be controlled, manipulated, monitored. Okay, well you might think, Fine. I don't think fine. I think fuck off. But even if we can tell whether a person is paying attention or their mind is wandering, you can't tell what they're paying attention to. Wrong. Yes, you can. And you can shock them. You would be wrong. It turns out that you can not only tell whether, whether a person is paying attention or their mind is wandering, but you can discriminate between the kinds of things that they're paying attention to. Why is no one getting up out of those chairs going, I'll fucking smash that thing because they're all on board. Whether they're doing something like central tasks, like programming, peripheral tasks, like writing documentation, or unrelated tasks. Like contemplating the freedom that was once a possibility that you gave up for convenience. Like surfing social media or online browsing. Michael! What are you doing up there? Just an unrelated task, Mom! I can see what you're thinking about, and I'm gonna need a word with your psychiatrist. When you combine brainwave activity together with other forms of software and surveillance technology, the power becomes quite precise. I thought she was gonna say terrifying, but she said precise. For them, precision is a kind of weapon. For us, that's a lack of control. Their agenda and our agenda cannot be met simultaneously. They are at odds. If your interest is freedom, if your interest is democracy, then this is your enemy. But at least it's far off in some hazy, almost unimaginable future that will not be there to tyrannize me. You may be surprised to learn that it's a future that has already arrived. Oh well, we had a good run. Everything in that video that you just saw is based on technology that is already here today. Artificial intelligence has enabled advances in decoding brain activity in ways that we never before thought possible. Or moral. We've all heard the whole idea that robots are coming for our jobs, that there will be no jobs left for humans, 
With generative AI, I think we have good reason to wonder how we're going to integrate that in ways that keep us relevant and challenged and important uh, in the workplace. Saying it as if it's like a tide and that they're not involved in creating these conditions. There could be an alternative vision for how the world is run. And it probably would be a differing and divergent and somewhat diffuse vision. You'd have to have some agreed upon principles. And I would imagine that pretty near the top of those principles would be the respect for individual freedom, collective freedom, democracy, community democracy, the ability to freely trade and pursue individual support. Stuff that you find actually in like the Magna Carta, the American Constitution, the writing of Thomas Paine, the writing of great thinkers throughout history enshrine these principles and ideas. These ideas cannot survive in the environment that's being created here. They will not. What do you think's happened in the last 20 years? Of course, there have been so many glorious commodities from the 50s onwards, but this my friend, is not a future that I want to live in. Because this is not about humanity, it's not about freedom, it's not about divinity, it's not about connection. And the reason it isn't is because all those values have been buried and lost in exchange for materialism, individualism, commerce, commodity. And this is the price you will pay. Because if there is no sublime, then there is no reason to regard individual freedom of a person's mind as something that is actually sacred. But there's a different pathway forward which is a responsive workplace. One where humans and robots and AI work seamlessly together. Seamlessly? A seam? That's your individual freedom. <laughs> that seam? That's you. Let's get rid of that seam. Let's unpick that. There you go. Now you're part of a blob, an autonomous blob. Isn't that what you always wanted? In one experiment, Penn State researchers were able to show that by monitoring brainwave activity with AI in a factory setting, the robot could sense stress levels in the individual. It was almost as if the workers were stressed because they were laboring under the tyranny of a fucking robot. And change the speed with which they were giving tasks to the human. This is like WFA's finest. They're literally presenting the machinery of tyranny as a tool for your convenience. This is it. So, P, you're not long going, yeah, yeah, that would be good, actually, on the building site if all of that, my robot overlords knew my stress levels and could monitor the speed with which they hod carried and issued bricks to me. Where is power? Where is authority? Who's making these decisions? Who's guiding this AI? Who creates these algorithms? Whose objectives and agenda? are ultimately fulfilled. Do they meet up anywhere in the world to discuss ways that they can say that the world is changing and improving without ever impeaching or impeding upon the interests of the powerful? Yeah, this actually, by coincidence, is that same conference. Oh, wow, what a coincidence. Focusing in the world of wearable technology as opposed to implanted technology, and I do believe that within many of our lifetimes, we'll see healthy people using implanted brain technology as well. Also, I've got an idea for dinosaur theme park, which I know is gonna be a winner. Unless those dinosaurs got out of there somehow, again. Many companies are launching these earbuds and headphones this year that have sensors that are built in. I suppose if these robots did get out of control, we could create another robot and send that back into the past to kill us now, to stop us now doing this. Or we could not just do this now and make sure that we have more democracy and, I don't know, a code of virtues and morals that underwrite this technological advancement. No, no, I, I prefer the robot one. Want to come to a dinosaur theme park? When it's the same device that you're using to take calls from and also to listen to music from. And centralized issues and decrees from the state, making sure you've taken your medicines. Beep, beep. Then what's the problem there? That also is picking up brainwave activity. It's integrated into your everyday life. But as healthy people in a widespread way start to have their brainwave data collected, the insights that we can gain through pattern recognition will exponentially increase and pretty quickly. That's frightening, but promising. No, no, no. Just frightening. Because think about most of neurological disease and suffering. Oh yeah, no, the suffering, yeah, suffering. Of course, no, I remember now, suffering. That's how, how is it we get this stuff over the line again? Suffering, oh yeah, suffering. Already, gamers have figured out, for example, while person, a person is wearing a headset, how to you know, uh, prime a person through their brainwave activity to be able to decode their PIN number and their home address. So that's good, isn't it? I mean, who doesn't want to give their PIN number and home address to a stranger? So you don't have to have your full complex thought decoded to reveal your thoughts. Should we be doing this? Oh yeah. And how do you decode somebody's PIN number? You flash a series of numbers and see how their brain reacts to them? Why are you asking, you perv? So you have recognition memory signals that are 
pre-conscious and subconscious, and this is part of why it's been used, for example, by governments to interrogate criminals. Oh, the government could use it as well. Yeah, those guys, they love freedom, so that's good news. And who is a criminal? Uh, whoever we say is a fucking criminal. Do you recognize this potential co-conspirator? Do you recognize, yeah. um, you know, this murder weapon? Actually, no. Your brainwaves say you do. Bye. These are before you even consciously process information, so you could prime it with a number and then see if a person recognizes it. Um, and you can do it without them realizing that that's what you're doing. Look, I know you're thinking, you're terrified that this technology could be used to shut down dissent. Well, before you get worried about that, it's not like the people that are currently in those positions use big tech and social media platforms to penetrate and infiltrate and control narratives and not publish stories that are true but not favorable to their desired outcomes, is it? Oh yeah, no, that's exactly what they do. But they will stop eventually. I've got a hunch. You do not have a hunch. Hunches are illegal. You're going to prison. It wasn't really a hunch. Too late. Prison. Fahani revealed during her presentation that some form of brain activity tracking is already very much happening in the workplace. Good news, everyone. To be precise, according to the professor, more than 5,000 companies around the world are at this point monitoring their employees' brains for fatigue levels. She mentioned that companies like the corporate juggernaut, Meta, yeah, good, I'm glad they're involved, are involved in making this push specifically making these devices universally applicable, succeed. So, there you have it. It's not just a dystopic dream. It's not just science fiction. It's not just Minority Report. It's products that are available now in the hands of the worst institutions imaginable. And what are we going to do? Probably buy them. <laughs> this is an opportunity for you to cultivate, nurture an alternative vision for your own life as an individual human. What's your relationship with nature? What's your relationship with one another? What's your relationship with your innermost self? Is that something you want pride on and spied on by Klaus Schwab? and his globalist buddies, it's up to you. Is there a different world that you want to inhabit where technology, medicine and science are a necessary part of it, aiding humanity and our shared goals, where we democratically run our own communities according to our own principles, cultures, traditions and ideals? Is that something that might interest you? No, didn't think so. Oh well, let's just sleepwalk into dystopia then. Because it's convenient, because it's safe, because they said so. Come on, discover your humanity. Awaken now, because there are alternative futures and I believe we can create a beautiful one together. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Turn on the notification bell while we can still influence the algorithm before it influences us. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these little guys. Remember, we need you in our community. We're on Rumble every single day. We broadcast every single day. We need you to share it. Please, if you can, while you still can, stay free.